Okay, so this is going to be the last problem on cantilever beams. It is slightly advanced, as you can see. Here, the area moment of inertia is double than this portion. Hmm? Uh, by the way, the diagram in the problem has not been given to you. However, we can read and understand this. Uh, let, let's start. There is a cantilever beam A, B. Okay, length is 2 meters and carries a point load of 10 kN at B. 10 kN at B. Very well. The area moment of inertia for right half of the cantilever is 10 to the power 8. Let's say that this is represented by simply I. Whereas for the left half, left half, okay, it is 2 into 10 to the power 8. So this over here, I have uh, uh, assumed this 10 to the power 8 as I. So this becomes 2 into 10 to the power 8 as 2I. Okay, let's keep it very simple. We have also been given the Young's model is and what we need to do is we need to find the slope and deflection at the three end that is over here that is at point B. So far so good. So what are these steps going to be? The step is very simple. Take a look. In step number one you need to make a bending moment diagram for this real beam. Once that is done you have to then put that bending moment diagram onto this real beam right change the end conditions both the things have to be done simultaneously and by the way m over ei diagram on top of the real beam and change the end conditions when i say change the end conditions is that in order to transform this real beam into a conjugate beam this fixed end will be made free whereas this free end will be made fixed just a quick recap and in step 3 you just calculate uh, <coughs> once the conjugate beam is constructed you just calculate its shear force it is going to give you the value of slope for the real beam and the bending moment for the conjugate beam will give you the value of deflection for the real beam right so these are the steps now let's go ahead and let us first of all take a section hmm? and one more thing i don't know whether you guys noticed or not initially we are assuming the beam to be of uniform cross section okay let us assume this we are going to change it later on don't worry once we make the initial bending moment diagram based on this high uniform cross section. Let me take a section. Again, when you take the section from the right, bending moment is clockwise. Section XX and the bending moment on this section XX is, let's say, MX. Equilibrium case, okay. So, MX is clockwise, therefore negative MX. Secondly, this 10 multiplied by this perpendicular distance, that is X. So, it is sort of creating or trying to bend the beam in this fashion. It is a case of hogging, therefore negative sign. Simplify this. Now, plug in the value of x is equal to 0 to find the bending moment at b. Here we go. It is 0, obviously. And you plug in the value of x as 2 meters to get the bending moment at this point a. Done. And you can clearly see that this is, it means the output is dependent on the input in a sort of linear fashion. If you keep on increasing the value of x, m would also increase, but in the negative way. Let me show this to you. x is equal to 0, moment is 0. But when x is equal to, let's say, half, how much is half of the beam? It is 1. Here, we have got x is equal to 1. So, when you put 1 over here, you get the corresponding bending moment as 10. When you put x is equal to 2 over here, you get the corresponding bending moment as 20. Right? So, all of this is negative and now let me superimpose this M diagram. Well, we are going to divide it by EI, all the values and put it on the beam in this fashion. Hmm? You must have noticed that this fixed end has been converted into a free end and this free end has been converted into a fixed end. That is the only thing. So far, so good. Now, <coughs> is this correct? Well, uh, this is correct if the beam is having a uniform cross section. This is uniform cross section. But we know that our beam has a varying cross section. That means uh, here it is different, here it is different. I mean, the value of i is different in the cases. And we know that this portion is having i, it is 2i, this is i. So the calculations that we've done is for i. So this portion will stay unaffected, nothing will happen check it out check it out nothing will happen 
nothing will happen however this portion will change this is 20 by ei now this 20 by ei has to be divided by 2 and when you do that it becomes 10 over ei in the same fashion this 10 over ei now has to be divided by 2 hmm? because this portion is 2i divided by 2 it will become 5 over ei i hope you are able to spot the difference actually if you if i can just show you what really happened this portion was 20 by ei hmm? this portion this is 10 by ei you know this now this has become half what happens is 20 by e into 2i so when you do this math this is equal to 10 over ei same value i'm sure now you are able to relate and the same has happened here 10 by ei e into i is nothing but 2i because this portion is 2i when you do the math this is what you get 5 over ei i hope this is clear to everyone now let's enjoy let's have fun let's convert these uh, triangularly varying loads into point loads let me start with this one what do you see here how much is this think about it this is going to be 5 over e i okay so half of base what is the base into height base is one this much distance let me this is one meter this also is one meter so base is one meter which i have plugged in this is height 5 over ei which i have plugged in to simplify this 5 over 2 ei that is the first value which you've got this is specifically let me mark this for this very small triangle that you see which has got a base as one and height as five over ei now let us talk about the rectangle the load acting on this rectangle or the point load corresponding to this rectangular figure over here will be acting right at the center and this distance over here is half of one that is one by two so rectangle base into height it's very simple so the base happens to be i think i need to this is the base one meter this is one meter again so the base happens to be one meter multiplied by the height how much is the height five over ei okay base into height that's five over ei and this also is five over ei right so that when you add both of them what you have is 10 over ei right done uh, thirdly here it is half of base base is one that's one and to height height this is 10 over ei let me mark it 10 over ei there you go these are the values what do you need sir we need the shear force what is the logic so for shear force calculation uh, we want the shear force at b so that we can have the slope at b negative values all of them why when you consider the portion left of the beam left of the beam shear force convention sign convention says downward is negative and upward is positive so all of these forces are downward so i have taken a common minus sign and i will put them all of them into brackets 5 over 2 ei 5 over ei 5 over ei you just do the math this is what you that is your slope for the real beam at the free end beam similarly you can let me remove all of this let me just this is one this is one one meter and one meter again now take a look <coughs> how much is this sir from the right angle this is the small triangle that we can see this is going to be one over three okay how much is this so this is going to be one by two okay and what about this so this is going to be one by three again now we are interested in deflection at b for the real b that means bending moment has to be calculated okay so all of these forces will have when you make it will bend the beam in this fashion negative bending all of them in fact so i have taken a common negative sign hmm? and i'll put the moment force into perpendicular distance for all the three 
uh where shall we begin from okay so the force is 5 over 2 ei 5 over 2 ei what is the perpendicular distance of this so this is at a distance of 2 minus 1 by 3 that means this distance let me put this in this color this distance i am talking about is going to be 2 minus 1 by 3 there we go that is the number one thing let now rectangle 5 by ei okay this is 5 by ei how far is this is the line of action of this force from point b so if you watch if i just extend this this distance is half 1 by 2 plus 1 that is the value and finally you've got this 5 over ei uh, here it is 5 over ei 5 over ei uh, how far is this from point B? So it's, it's very simple. This is equal to 1 minus 1 by 3. 1 minus 1 by 3. Now just take the LCM, do the math. This is what you get. Right? So the bending moment for the conjugate beam qualifies as the deflection for the PLP. These are the values. Uh, <coughs> Theta is minus 25 by 2 EI and deflection, let me check, is minus 15 over EI. Both of them are negative. If you want, we can represent these values uh, with the help of this figure. Take a look. Hmm? Negative sign indicates uh, angle has been measured clockwise with respect to positive x value and uh, negative sign in deflection represents it is, that means the point is displacing in the downward direction. So, this is what we can infer from the result what i want all of you to do is take this value of e this is in kilonewton meter square and this value of i hmm? let me write this i is 10 raised to 8 mm power 4 and e is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 8 kilo newton per meter square you don't have to do anything to e because everything has been done uh, in kilonewtons right from the beginning what you need to do is there is a specific value of i which you would be getting in meter raised to the power 4 okay when you get these two values multiply them you are going to get some value of ei again kilo newton meters square plug that in at these two locations and let me know how much is the value in in radians and in meters right so that is a small task that i have left for all of you so guys if you believe this kind of content has added value to your knowledge of engineering mechanics or mechanics of solids or theory of structures feel free to like this video subscribe to the channel and also share it with as many friends as you can this is manas patnaik signing off take care and have a nice day